It's Kathy Champion and you're back in my craft room here at Random Acts of Stamping. I am a independent uh, demonstrator for Stamping Up and today we're going to work with the Ornate Style Stamp Set and we're also going to be using our Stamparatus. Um, we're going to use some Stampin' Blends, some Memento Ink, Calypso Coral Ink and I have a card base that I cut at um, four and a quarter by eleven and scored it at five and a half and we're going to use this as a landscape card sort of like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a mat that's going to go on the front and we're going to stamp this mat in this calypso coral with this beautiful little uh, floral image that that uh, came out of the out of this particular stamp set. We're also going to do this beautiful um, spray of flowers, and I am going to use the Calypso Coral, and I think the Mango Melody. I think these two colors will pair really well together. We're probably going to also do a green so we can do the leaves, and I think for the leaves I'm going to use um, Old Olive. So these are the, the four or the three colors that we're going to use. Calypso Coral. They do come in a pack of two, so you get the light and the dark. Um, the the Mambo mm, Mango Melody. I'm sorry. All right, everybody. I'm back, and I do apologize for my interruption. But what I did while I was away is I went ahead and grabbed this large flower out of this ornate style uh, stamp set and this is going to go on a piece of whisper white cardstock and this is the thick and what I'm going to do is I want to stamp this in the memento ink because we're going to use these alcohol markers to color. Now if you have the stamp apparatus and you notice that when you push it over to ink it you either have to take it off or you're working with it on an angle and sometimes you don't get your ink as even. I found out that the stamp case is the perfect platform to make that sit perfectly even. Let me push that up a little bit to get us back into uh, camera range so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, but this works perfectly and it gives you a platform, a nice even flat area um, to be able to um, ink it up and that is always crucial. So I'm going to ink this really good because I want a nice good impression because we're going to alcohol marker and sometimes your flowers can get lost if the ink isn't dark. So let's try that and set that over there. And this is what's so nice about the Stamparatus because you now if I take this up and I don't get the image that I want, say it's not quite as dark as I would like, uh, I can just re-ink it and stamp it again. Of, co of, of course, that's one of the best features for anything that you do when you're stamping. If you can repeat the, the motion without getting um, sort of a staticky image and when I say staticky I mean the lines don't line up perfectly and that that actually stamped beautifully I could not be more pleased let me bring that up to the camera so you can see that is beautiful so we're going to go with that and I am going to clean my um, stamp saw my stamp off and I'm going to use some of the um, Stampin' Mist because this stuff is fantastic. And look at that size bottle. I mean, that's a big bottle of stamp cleaner. And it's relatively um, uh, priced at a, at a good price point. So if you need a, a stamp cleaner, um, you might want to go in, and check that out. What I love about it is how well it cleans the stamps. And y'all see me use this in my Stampin' Scrub. And if you use a platform stamp or a, a, a stamping platform like the Stamparatus or any other type of stamping platform, it's always nice to be able to clean your stamps before you peel them off. And this allows you to do it just by having a little soft microfiber um, towel. And you can pick those up at the dollar store or whatever. And they're very inexpensive. So we got that taken care of. 
So I'm going to put my stuff back in there and I'm just going to set my Stamparatus over here for right now because what I want to do is I want to concentrate on coloring our image. Now I'm going to color it off camera because it is very time consuming. Nobody wants to sit and watch somebody color. I know I don't, but I'm going to use the Calypso Coral and I'm going to do that and alternate my colors with this um, Mango Melody. I think these colors will pair so well together and I'm using an old olive for my leaves. And I think that this is going to give it a much of a fall theme by using these colors. And that's exactly what I'm um, going for. So let me uh, go and color these and we will be right back and I'm going to fussy cut it. So when we get back I'll have that all done and be, we'll be ready to move on. Okay, everybody, we got this um, completely colored, and we've got it uh, fussy cut, and that didn't take but a second, did it? <laughs> Actually, it did take a little bit longer than a second, but nevertheless, this was so much fun to color, and just using these three colors, I think that it turned out absolutely beautiful. Now, I have to admit, I did grab my pumpkin spice for the middle of these two flowers because the Calypso Coral was just a little too dark, even using the lighter one, so I really wanted those to have more of a pumpkin um, type feel to it and see how I did those and I shaded it so that they look like almost like the sun shining down on that one and kind of up on this one. So I love the way this turned out. Um, I, it was it was really easy to fussy cut this piece and um, it was a lot of fun to color. So what I want to do next is, and I still have some little scraps of paper on my work surface. What I want to do next is, um, the back side of this is kind of dirty, but this side isn't. So we are going to use the Calypso Coral and this little stamp because what I want to do is I want this to live maybe like this maybe something like that on the white like that maybe and this is going to give us a place up here that's going to be um, large enough for our um, our little sentiment so I have these two strips and I'll give you the measurements on those in just a moment this piece right here is cut at four by five and one fourth and this is like the, a mat size for an A2 size card and we are going to um, pop this up probably with some pop dots and or some uh, dimensionals so before we do that I want this to look like a pattern piece of paper and in order to do that we are going to make our own pattern paper so I am going to lay my piece over there and we're going to pull this over with our Calypso Coral um, stamp pad. This ink is so pretty and I think it's going to look beautiful on here but what you want to try to do is stamp so that it kind of fits together. Um, so we're going to be careful. We might have to redo this one but you know what? If we do, we do. So I'm going to stamp kind of on and off the paper like that. And then I'm going to turn my block, and I want to get this one just to curl right into it. So you might have to use a little bit of finesse, and you just want to stamp around without stamping over, if that makes any sense. Uh, and you might get a little bit of overage here and there, but that and that's okay. It's all right. We, are, we want a little bit of that white to show, so it doesn't matter if we have a little bit of the white. Um, I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to stamp again here. And maybe off right there. And maybe like that. And I'm just randomly stamping down these beautiful, beautiful flowers. And they are so pretty. And 
what we're doing when with this technique, you're making your own pattern paper, and y'all see me do this many times. It's one of my favorite things to do. I think it's so much fun, and you can have such a good technique with it. Now we did stamp a little over, but that's okay. I am going to grab a wipe. These are some little alcohol wipes that I made. I just bought some uh, regular wipes from my local store, and I just put in some alcohol. And I had some alcohol san a hand sanitizer that was really runny. It really didn't serve my purpose for hand sanitizer, so I used that to make some wipes. And it worked really good for those. So I'm going to go ahead and close up this ink pad before I get my hand in it. And I'm going to dry this off. I'm just going to use my little microfiber cloth and just to dry that off so we don't have any wetness on our card. And as you can see, there was a few old boo-boos on there, but that's okay because when we bring our stamp over, we can actually cover up the boo-boos just like that. And how pretty is that? That is going to look gorgeous on there. And nobody's going to know, nobody's going to um, want to take that up and decide whether or not we have boo-boos under there. So nobody has to know about those except us. And we're not telling, are we? <laughs> So let's go ahead and get some dimensionals because I do want to put this um, beautiful spray of flowers up on some Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm going to turn it over. And if you're working with the, um, the uh, Stampin' Blend markers, you're always going to want to work on a surface that you can clean. Don't do it on your regular table. Put down um, an extra piece of paper or an extra cardstock. Um, you know, just something that will protect your surf, your surface. We also sell the Stampin' Up! Um, uh, grid sheets that are wonderful to put down on your work surface that will protect it. I didn't put one down today because I had my glass mat down. I so wish that Stampin' Up! would come out with a glass mat. I am waiting for that. <laughs> I would love to see a glass mat from Stampin' Up! I hope they're listening. All right, I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool, and we are going to pick off these backers. So I'm going to go around just like this, and just flick those off. How neat is that? You can wrangle these off so nicely, and you can just put those right in your trash, and just keep going. You can tell when it gets full where it might not want to pick up any more of them. And I think we got them all. Whoops, there's one. And all you have to do to make sure you got them all is you can just basically feel and you can tell. You'll be able to tell immediately. Let's see, I think I want this to go I think I want it to go like this. So let's just stick that down just like that. Isn't that pretty? I love that. Now we are going to need to, I need to clean this um, stamp real quick. So just bear with me. I'm going to use my stamping scrub. And look how nice and big this is. And I already have some stamp cleaner on this side. So I'm going to Wash it on this side, and then dry it up on this side. And look at that. Beautifully clean and ready to go on my next big stamping adventure. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to find a sentiment, what I want this card to say. And I've got some stamps over here, so let's see. Uh, here's the ornate thanks. This is in that ornate style. Um, there were three, or two stamp sets, and I think three sets of dies for this. Um, you know what? I don't think the thanks is going to fit on my. Oh, actually.
hopefully it will. So let's go ahead and pull off our things. And I'm going to show you another great tool when you're using your photo polymer stamps. Um, and that is your your little stamping um, this is the foam stamping pad that we we all thought had been discontinued and come to find out it wasn't and I know that there were so many people that was so happy that that stamp set came back or this or this item came back not stamp set I am th trying to think ahead of myself and talk at the same time and y'all want to know what uh, it's not working very well for me <laughs> all right I'm gonna pick this stamp up and the first thing I want to do before I pick it up is I want to make sure I get it straight on my block now again if you have trouble stamping straight you can use your stamparatus it works wonderful but I'm gonna try my best to get this on here and I'm doing the Calypso Coral because that's my theme. And I am going to come over about to there and stamp. Oh, beautiful. That is gorgeous. So I'm going to set my stamp back up there. And what I want to do is see how much of this we're going to be able to fit on our card. And what I want this to do is we are going to take off, let's see, I am measuring this. This piece actually measures um, three quarters by four inches, but we're going to take this down to three inches. So we're going to cut that down to three, and this piece is four and a quarter so we're going to take it down to three and a quarter so let's go ahead and close up the sink pad one more time get our trimmer out and we're going to take this to three so let's line that up right there on the three inch mark And this one we're going to do at three and a quarter, three and one fourth. And then I think this is going to work on here beautifully. Oh yeah. And I'm going to glue that directly down to my um, to my piece. So I'm just going to take a little bit of liquid Tombow glue and I am going to just put a little bit right there and then I'm going to do my eyeball thing just like that. And I'm going to turn that over and just mash it hoping I'm not smearing my ink and I didn't. Close up my glue. And now this is ready to go on here. And we can do one of two things. We could put it across the flowers. We could put it across the flowers up here at the top. And I think that's what I'm going to do. That will cover up the least amount. But if you notice, I'm going to need glue on this side and a dimensionals over here. So I'm going to put my dimensionals on first. So I'm going to put one, maybe two. And then I'm going to grab my glue again, and I'm just going to do a little bit of glue like that. And then let's go ahead and pick these off. And then we are going to put this right about here. And the reason I chose this particular spot is I'm covering up the least amount of my flowers there. 
Now all we have to do is put the whole thing right here on our card base. And look how stinking adorable that is. I love that. I think it... The one other thing that I think I would do is I would put some Wink of Stella. And this is my Glitter Clear. And I think I want these flowers to just look like they have been kissed by the dew. So I'm just going to paint up a little bit, maybe the leaves too. The Wink of Stella really does add a lot to your flowers. I think it gives them such a pretty, pretty touch. So we are just going to paint that on. And you squeeze your tube up here just to release a little bit more of your sparkly. And this isn't super sparkly, but it gives just an ever so slightly um, glimmer that adds so much. Um, I love using the Wink of Stella. It is gorgeous. You know, any little thing that you can do to jazz up your cards and your um, your little ditties that you make, it it just um, I think it adds a lot, and it shows that to the recipient of your card that you cared enough to take a little extra time to um, put a little more effort in making their special card. So I'm looking over here to see if I have any ribbon that we might be able to, and I don't know that I want to do ribbon. I might want to do a sequin. And you know these right here are the elegant facet, faceted gems. And they are gorgeous. Look at that amber color. I think this will go perfect with the one of mine has gotten stuck to the packaging. That's not good. We'll see if we can glue him back on there. And it looks like several of these have come loose. And I don't know if it had to do with the heat in the summer with the shipping. I'm not sure what happened. But we're going to take these little amber colored ones. And <coughs> we are going to put one right here. And grab one more. And let's put one right about here. And then we'll grab one of the bigger ones. And I think I want that one right about there. That looks really good. Now I'm going to see if I can get this one back on here. There's one of these that's a little out of sync. And see, some of these seem like they fell off. I'm not sure what happened. But we're going to see if we can line them back up. And sometimes when, you know, things are coming through the mail and in the heat, they may not hold up um, as well. But if you get something that you can't use, and, and I will use these even if I have to put down a little glue dot or something on them. That one doesn't want to seem to adhere, but that's okay. We'll slide him back in the package, and I'll put a little glue on him when I get ready to use it. So that will definitely work. So I think what I want to do is I want to pop this up as well. I think that will give it a little bit more dimension. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop dimensionals on each corner. So I'm not going to use quite as many on here as I did my flowers. And then I'm going to put one in the middle and one here and one here. And let's go ahead and take these off. This 
this is all ready to put down on our card. We need to move that out because whenever I put my cards down, I like to gauge exactly where I need it to go. And this is going to go down just like that. Nice and even. And that is a beautiful thank you card. Wouldn't this be beautiful to give on Thanksgiving? Maybe if you're invited to dinner at a family member's house and you wanted to show your appreciation. This would be a gorgeous card to give to your hostess or host. This flower didn't look like it had as much of the shimmer as the other ones did, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. And I am going to add just a little bit of shimmer to my word thanks. And that is beautiful. Look at how pretty that is. I don't know if you can see the shimmer. There you go. It is gorgeous. Now for my inside, I'm going to let this dry over here for a minute. And I am going to figure out what I want to put in the inside my card. I know the one thing I want to do is I want to follow through with this maybe on the corner edge. Or better yet, you know what else I really loved in this um, ornate? I love this little um, flourish. Isn't that gorgeous? So let's grab out the flourish. I think this would be so elegant to put in the, each corner. And let me get, um, let's see, we put thanks. Um, your kindness is so loved. Um, thanks ever so much from all of us for all your help. Thanks, you made my day. Thanks, just wanted to say. Or it should be just wanted to say and then thanks. Um, thanks from the bottom of my heart. That would be a, a cute one to put on here. I think I'm going to go with that one. That one, I just, it, I just love it. And I think with this one across the center, like that, let's see if this stamp will pick it up. If it don't, we can go in and grab the bigger one, and it does. So what I want to do, again, especially with sentiments, I want to make sure that I get them straight on my stamp block. And that looks nice and straight, so then I'm going to pick it up, and then we're going to bring this back over, and again, I'm going to use that Calypso Coral, but I also want to load this up. because I want to stamp the flourish on the around the corner. So this is going to go in the center. So let's go ahead and get that Calypso Coral out again. This is such a beautiful color. And sometimes I think people might overlook this of not being a fall color, but it is a beautiful fall color. So I'm loving it. All right, I'm going to straighten this up on here. And we are going to stamp this right there in the center. I'm going to hold it and let it transfer from the bottom of my heart. I love it. Love, love, love it. All right, now I'm going to take this little stamp. This is the good thing about having the different stamp blocks. You can just stamp and stamp to your heart's content um, if you got all of these stamping up. Now move that out of my way because that is basically for your photopolymer stamps. And I'm, this is a cling stamp. So I am going to put that down right about 
there. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to put it down right over here. Oh, that's so pretty. And I'm going to turn it and do the same thing down in the bottom corners. And then I'm going to turn it one more time and set it right here. Now look how that dressed up the inside of that card. Isn't that pretty? All right, I'm going to grab that stamp cleaner one more time because this stamp got very very juicy I think I I think I stuck it in my ink a little bit more than I did the other one so I think we're done with our ink so I'm gonna go ahead and close this up hopefully for the last time very good Let's get this one clean good and then I got this one and I think I cleaned it but just for and the good thing about these stamp blocks you can use the top and the bottom of them so you can load a stamp up on the top and the bottom so when you get ready to clean you didn't you don't have any issues whatsoever and I love 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 that all right this is ready to go inside of our card and this is going to go right about here. Just like that. And I think for this one, I am going to use some liquid glue. I think that's all we're going to need on the bottom of this. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue like this. And then I'm going to put this down, eyeballing making sure I'm getting my edges straight and there we go. Now I am going to turn that over and just press it and you can always come back with your bone folder just to kind of put that ink down and what do y'all know we have a beautiful fall card that was really so easy to make this was a very simple card to make and yet I think it turned out beautiful. So let's give it a showcase spot. I'm going to move my mat out of the way. And we are going to zoom in. Oops, a little bit too much. Right about there looks good. And isn't that pretty and then when you open it you've got this beautiful message on the inside surrounded by these beautiful flourish uh, little scrollies which I think are adorable I love the way this card turned out you could also stamp your envelope if you make your envelopes you can very easily take a piece of paper and you can stamp it with this you could do it with the little flourishes on the corners of your envelope. There's so many different ways that you can decorate your envelope. So I hope y'all enjoyed the making of this beautiful thank you card. Uh, I hope that you will try this. And if you want any of the products you, that you've seen in today's video, just go down and click the link and that will take you to my Stampin' Up! website. And there you can purchase all of the supplies that you've seen me use today. So I hope you have a very blessed and wonderful day. God bless and keep you. Uh, love you all very much. Bye-bye. A quick reminder that this month's host code is right here, 9SUM6ZZM. I will have this in the description below along with my website and all of the supplies that I use to make this beautiful card. So if you are interested in shopping from me, if you use this host code during the month of September and you, you make a purchase of $50 or more before your uh, shipping and tax, then you will receive a free gift.
Uh, the gifts can vary, but they will all be about the same dollar amount. So if you want to place um, more than one order, you're more than welcome to do that as well. You can place one large order or you can just place one small order. But if you do want to be included in the giveaway, um, the free gift, then make sure you use this host code. Thanks so much, and everybody have a very blessed day. I love you all. Bye-bye.